good to see you here this morning and I hope this finds you well and surviving this strange time we're living in. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and recognize their continuing connection to land, waters and community. We pay our respects to them and their cultures and to elders both past and present. Jesus is with us and I light this candle to help us remember that his light shines through us in every aspect of our lives. And I open the Bible, the Bible that tells the stories, gives us direction and helps us to know that we are part of a long tradition. Love's strong voice calls us to move beyond all that divides us, one from another. Come, let us follow love's lead. With generous grace, love welcomes all that we are. Love invites us to be unfolded into a community of mutual affection and respect. Love's tender voice stirs within us a desire for harmony and peace. Love makes us kin with all in Christ and reveals how we are to live together. Love creates space for worship so we can rest in Sabbath's time. Come, let us follow love's lead. Let us worship God. you to join with me in our prayer of approach which has been given to us by our moderator Reverend C. Francis. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, awesome creator and marvelous saviour, we thank you for your life-giving love. Jesus reminds us that such is your care for us that even the hairs on our head. We lament with you over the spread of a coronavirus around the world. We are saddened by suffering and death that has resulted from this pandemic. We pray for the brave medical teams that are dealing daily with the pandemic. Keep their bodies healthy as they help care for others. We ask for your inspiration to be with the researchers who are working tirelessly to find a vaccine. Our hearts go out to all who have lost loved ones. Be their comfort and strength at this difficult time. 
Lord, we are also mindful of those whose suffering is economic and relational. We pray for all those who have lost their jobs and their businesses and feel the hopelessness of unemployment and poverty. We entreat you, O God, to give wisdom and guidance to our Prime Minister and State Premiers as they guide us through these uncertain times. Fill us with compassion, empathy and kindness, that we may do all we can for those who are struggling with loneliness, anxiety and fear. We thank you that even in the darkest moments, your light and love shine through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from our Hebrew tradition, Genesis 32, verses 22 to 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God's God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. God of the mountains and clear skies, here we can see ourselves more clearly, where the air is thinner and the light is clearer, and we confess we long to fold up our living. We long to hide away from the times when what we have done has not brought glory to you and has caused you and others pain. We want to forget those times when the opportunities for doing what is right have not been taken and the chance to speak out has not been grasped. We want to fold up, hide from the truth and be left alone. But you are the God of transformation. Transfigure our confession that we may hear your forgiveness and find renewal and life again. God says it's good for you to be here. God says you are my beloved child. God says listen to me. Through forgiveness there is change and in being forgiven there is an unfolding, an uncrushing, an enlivening and the bringing of life. I will unfold your pain, I will uncrush your soul, I will increase your hope, and in that transfiguring together we might find the glory I honed into your life at creation. Reading from our Christian tradition, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet. Reading from our Christian tradition, Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Lord, may your word live in us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, loving God. Amen. The legend of Jacob is a great read. We encounter an unlikely hero wearing all his faults on his sleeve for the world to see. This lack of editing out of the black bits in the Bible story 
suggests that the legend certainly rem um, stems from a real person, a real ancestor of Jesus of Nazareth, because he is such a mixture. On the one hand, the lover who so loved Rachel that he toiled 14 years to pay her bride price, and on the other hand, was a cunning cheat. We can identify with this character. He's flawed like us. The wrestling with the stranger in the night happened when Jacob was returning home with his enlarged family and servants after many years of exile. He had every reason to be afraid of his brother Esau, whom he foully cheated long ago. Messengers were sent to prepare the way. They rushed back with the news that Esau was coming to meet them with 400 men. Jacob was now so afraid that he divided his flocks and people into two groups to be separated by some distance. So that if Esau and his men destroyed one group, the other might survive. Next, he prepared peace offerings. Groups of animals would be driven on ahead in a series of waves so that Esau could meet and receive the gifts in succession and hopefully be turned from vengeance to mercy. That evening, anxious Jacob sent his two wives and their 11 children across a stream to safety while he remained alone in the night. And that is when the dark wrestle commenced. A powerful stranger came in the night and wrestled with him. Jacob was outmatched but would not give in. Hour after hour they struggled. Jacob was injured in his thigh, yet he still hung in there. Near daybreak, he demanded a blessing and the name of the person with whom he wrestled. He was given no name but did receive the blessing of the stranger. When daylight came, he was alone, but he now realized that he'd been wrestling with God. Jacob called the place Peniel, meaning face of God. Jesus had to wrestle. Jesus understands you from personal experience. He had his dark, brooding times, out in the Judean wilderness tempted for 40 days, up there on the Galilean hills at night, deeply troubled in the Garden of Gethsemane, feeling forsaken on the cross at Golgotha. There are seasons in the spiritual life for most of us when it feels as if we've entered desert terrain, times when each day seems hard, bare, and dry. When our pilgrimage feels like 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration. I personally find that today's story from the Gospel, according to Matthew, speaks to me like a parable for all who find themselves in a spiritual drought. Jesus met with about 5,000 people in a desert place. How did he get in that situation? Why the desert place? The first part of chapter 14 describes the bloody end of John the Baptist. John was a cousin of Jesus, and don't forget his forthright preaching had prepared the way for Jesus. Recall how Jesus himself had been baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan River. We don't know how their close family ties influenced them, but certainly there was a spiritual affinity between the two cousins. How would Jesus react when the news reached him? Jesus chose a desert place. Immediately, Jesus asked his disciples to take him away from the crowds. They boarded a fishing boat and sailed out across a bay to a desert place. You can see by this sudden retreat how devastated Jesus was by the death of his cousin. Physically, he sought the solitude of a desert place. Emotionally, he was plunged into a desert experience of the soul. 
Maybe in this time of spiritual desolation, God seemed far away. He felt spiritually desert, desolate. Out there in the desert place after the murder of his courageous cousin, I reckon Jesus was spiritually in the desert as well. But his time alone for prayer and reflection was cut short. The crowds hungry for more of his healing, parables and actions saw the direction the boat took and guessed where it would make landfall. Typically, Jesus put his own needs aside and responded to theirs. When Jesus saw the crowd, he was deeply moved with compassion for them, and he healed their sick. Even if Jesus was feeling spiritually desolate, his profound love had time for the needs of the poor masses, many of them disease-stricken or handicapped. At the end of the day, the multitude was still with him, out there in the desert place, and the disciples asked Jesus to order them to go away and fend for themselves in the nearest towns. But Jesus was not impressed with that idea, and he said to his disciples, you feed them. And they protested, you must be joking. All we have for ourselves are five small fishes and two, five small loaves and two fish. Then followed one of the most remarkable meals of all time, he asked the people to sit down. He took the five loaves and the two fish and prayed for God's blessing. He broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the hungry multitude. I ask you to pause in your thoughts at this point and think about mealtimes. Jesus made mealtimes an opportunity for breaking down the barriers and opening people up to the inclusive love of God. The more rigid Jewish authorities were very fussy about their meals and the people with whom they could disdain to share with them. They had their own version of a caste system. And in that system, the majority of ordinary people would be excluded from breaking bread with righteous men of Israel. Theirs was a closed table, but Jesus had an open table he shared food with any who wished to join him or with any who wished to invite him to their table. He scandalized the virtuous Jews by his dining habits. He broke bread with anyone. He genuinely joined in the party. So it was in the desert place. That day at dusk, Jesus played host to 5,000 hungry people. It was an open table. All were welcome. He said the blessing and broke the bread. So they all ate and were satisfied. And at the end of the meal, the disciples gathered up the leftovers and found there were still 12 full baskets. This wonderful Jesus has food to share with whosoever may come. We gather at one of his tables this day we must admit that the menu is simple and spare, a fragment of bread and a sip from the holy cup, yet it is more than enough. To be totally satisfied to the roots of one being does not depend on quantity, but on quality. They were content, even in a desert place. So can we be content, even in our deserts of the soul? Our faith may falter, our hopes may have been crushed, our vows may have been only poorly implemented. For a time, the felt sense of the presence of God may have forsaken us, but the table assures us and nourishes us. Whenever we give thanks to God and break the bread, we are more than content. So they all ate and were satisfied. And yet at the end of a meal, the disciples gathered up the leftovers and found there were still 12 full baskets. Nothing can be more ordinary than those common meal times, yet nothing can ever be more extraordinary. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Loving God, our Saviour and Healer, the world is too big for us, the degree of human suffering too great for us, the tangle of cause and effect too complex for us. Prayfully, we place before you a tiny segment of humanity and ask you to bless them well. Then as you bless them, please bless all the other people whose needs are outside our direct knowledge. We pray for our land, Australia, and all the people of the many indigenous and ethnic groups who live here. We ask, O oh God, to help all of us to live together in harmony. We pray for our politicians that they may remember that they are a part of us and that they will remember to rule wisely and well. We pray for the people of this community, especially for any who find life bewildering and aimless. We pray for all who are suffering from the effects of the coronavirus, patients, doctors, nurses, that they may feel your loving arms around them. We pray for grieving members of our community, those reeling from death, divorce, loss of job, or family estrangement. We pray for members of this community who are facing temptations or worries that today seem overwhelming, especially for any who are near breaking point. We pray for members of this church who feel at crossroads between doubt and faith especially for any who feel too shy or ashamed to talk about their feelings. Gracious God, Saviour and Healer, may your children know your love and strength and feel your presence in the path of life. Most loving God, with our assistance or without it, please reach far beyond the limited circle of these prayers that the world may be drawn away from all that is defeatist, deranged, and diseased towards the love, mercy, and peace of your Son Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. The table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. It is a table of company with Jesus and with all those who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Jesus became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this sacrament often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Loving God, it is through your goodness that we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. In the sharing of this bread, may we know your resurrection presence, and may we know that in touching all bread, all matter, it is you we touch. What we do here is celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares among us now. Made one with Christ and thus one with each other, let us offer these gifts and with them ourselves a single holy living sacrifice. The Lord be with you and also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We right them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give God thanks and praise. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for the gift of creation and life. You divided the light from the darkness and the water from the dry land. You made us in the image of yourself and breathed into us the breath of life. We thank you for the gifts of mercy and new life. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you delivered us from suffering and servitude. At the foot of your sacred mountain, you called us to truth and holiness. In the words of your holy prophets, you called us to justice and compassion. Through the lives of your blessed saints and martyrs, you taught us wisdom and faithfulness. We thank you for the gift of Jesus, your only begotten. He is the newness of your promise to us, 
the brightness of our hope in you, for he emptied himself, taking upon himself our bondage, bearing our sins, carrying the sorrows of our pilgrimage. And so we join our voices with those of a church, past and present, on earth and in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, Jesus and his friends gathered together in the upper room. During supper, he took some bread, and when he'd given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we show forth Christ's death until he comes in glory. Loving God, we offer you this bread and this cup, remembering his death and celebrating his resurrection. You have made him the bearer of justice to the ends of the earth. And so we pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make us one with Christ in his self-giving, that through us he may bind up the brokenhearted, comfort the mourners, open the eyes of the blind, and proclaim liberty to the captives, until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In this hope, and as, as your people, we praise you. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy. Amen. The breaking of the bread is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, share the feast. Let's pray the closing prayer. God of grace, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, I do not know all of the personal hard decisions, heavy responsibilities or heartaches that some of you might face once you leave this sanctuary of prayer. But one thing we do know, which is forever certain, we will not have to face any trial on our own. Bidden or unbidden, recognized or unrecognized, God will be there with you all the way in everything you do. With every step you take and with everyone you meet, God will be guiding and guarding you through each moment of each day. And the blessing of God, the triune God, be upon each one of you today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>